Hey everybody and welcome to another Cricut Craft tutorial and welcome to my brand new filming studio. I'm so excited for this new adventure and to get rid of this off-centered shelf. Don't worry, the whole background will be changing. I just came in here yesterday so it is really exciting and I can't wait to film a ton of new great tutorials for you guys. Now, if you're not subscribed to my channel, make sure you subscribe. We are so close to 100,000, and I have a great giveaway coming at 100,000, so you'll want to be involved for that. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to cut really, really small letters. This is a really, really little decal. It's only about three inches around, but those letters inside are maybe half an inch tall, and they're super thin. This design is from Design Space, and I'll show you guys that on Design Space when we go there. But this is so hard to weed the traditional way because sometimes the letters lift or those little thin lines come up. So I'm gonna show you guys a great way to weed this to help you keep everything in place. And it's so simple to do. I hope you guys will enjoy learning how to do this. So let's go over to Design Space so I can show you this and how to set your settings. To do this reverse weeding technique, we are gonna just use an image from Design Space. I thought this one was super cute and really, really fun. Plus, it has really small detailed letters, so that's something that reverse weeding is great for. But I'm gonna give you just a couple tips before we get started with reverse weeding. Reverse weeding should not be used on something that you are going to mail out or send to somebody or put back on the backing and not use right away because removing your vinyl from the backing and placing it back on the backing actually activates the adhesive because the adhesive is pressure sensitive. So if you are gonna reverse weed, make sure you're doing that with something that you are going to place the vinyl on fairly quickly. Um, I would say within a couple of hours, you wanna make sure that you have placed the vinyl on to something. Um, also, you wanna make sure you're using a quality vinyl anytime you are doing any sort of vinyl work. But especially for small letters, I have tried tons and tons of vinyl in all of my many years of crafting. And so far, StarCraft HD has really performed the best as far as small detailed cuts and letters are concerned. So we're going to cut this with StarCraft HD and we're going to use the glossy, which I absolutely think some of their colors are amazing, but they come in glossy and matte. So that's a really fun thing that you can do. So what we're going to do is go ahead and click make it. And for this one, it's not super tiny, but those letters are itty bitty. So keep that in mind. While the decal itself is about three inches, those little letters are really, really small. So go ahead and click continue. And it's gonna bring up the materials that we can cut with. Now, there's a couple ways that you can cut these little intricate details. You can use the washi sheet setting if you're having a lot of trouble, especially if they're very, very thin. And to find that, just click browse all materials and type in washi, which is W-A-S-H-I. Go ahead and click that and it's gonna bring up your washi sheet setting. Go ahead and select that and click done. Now with this setting on my machine, I have to use the more pressure setting. Um, some people can cut on the default setting. I recommend anytime you're going to try a new setting with different materials than you're used to, definitely do a test cut. Doing the capital letter R is a great way to do a test cut because there's lots of circles and straight lines as well as corners, and that's going to let you know if this is going to cut well on that setting. I would do the letter R about half an inch tall if you are going to try to make really, really small letters. That'll let you know if the washi sheet setting works for you. For me, typically I can get the vinyl setting with the StarCraft HD to cut beautifully, but if it's a super swirly font, a lot of times I do need to use the washi sheet setting. So let's go over to the machine. We're going to cut it out. I'm actually going to cut it twice just because occasionally I kind of mess up. I'm not perfect with the um, reverse weeding yet. I'm still getting used to it, but I really want to show you guys how to do it and keep in mind that nobody's perfect and it does take practice anytime you start to learn a new skill. So you're going to see me screw up a couple times it's fine, but that's why it's cut twice on my sheet because I'm going to cut it twice just in case I accidentally like stick vinyl to vinyl and it becomes a mess. So let's go ahead over to the machine so we can get started. We're using the StarCraft HD, like I said. So this is, we are going to cut on the vinyl setting. This is the first one to cut. I'll let you guys watch this cut. Now 
Now you want to take your vinyl off the mat and I just cut out our decals. They're both on this sheet. And what you're going to do is get some transfer tape. This is medium tack from 143 Vinyl. This is my favorite transfer tape. So I'm just going to peel some of it off the roll. And all I'm going to do is lay my decals face down onto my transfer tape. And it's okay if you have a little overlap over here that's not covered by transfer tape. That's totally fine. And then I'm just going to go ahead and trim out the section that has my vinyl on it. And now you can see you have your vinyl stuck to your transfer tape. So what I'm going to do is leave it upside down for just a second. You're going to want to get a squeegee and you're going to run it across the back of your vinyl. This is just called burnishing. So if you hear that word, it's burnishing. And you're just going to burnish your vinyl down to your transfer tape. Now, rather than when we would typically weed this part from the backing of our vinyl, we're going to take the vinyl backing off the entire decal. So you can see it looks like we have just a plain sheet of vinyl stuck to our transfer tape. But what we're going to do is take our vinyl backing off. So I use a pin pen, really like this. And what I do is I'm going to find the backing here. And this is helpful if you leave a little overhang. It makes it a little easier to pull the transfer tape off of the vinyl or the vinyl off the transfer tape in this case. Now this does take a little bit of practice. So don't worry if it's a little tough the first time you do it because it is kind of a strange thing for your brain to comprehend, especially if you've been doing it the other way for so long. But what we're going to do is just gently peel off. And anytime you weed anything, you do want to be gentle. You don't want to go too crazy. But we're just going to gently peel back our final from the decal here. And I just like to make a nice straight line across. And then you can just kind of peel it away. Now, if you have little spots, so I like to go in and you'll see that you have like little spots here where the M is. I like to go in with my pin pen and help pull those out a little bit. I just think it's a little bit easier for me to do that. And that way I'm sure that I'm not going to rip anything or make any mistakes. And you just kind of give it a little bit of a help. And then you can just keep pulling back. Now one thing you want to make sure is what I just accidentally did, and thankfully it's easy to undo. You don't want to get your vinyl, your sticky part, folded over onto the rest of your vinyl. So it's a little bit tricky because you do need to watch what you're doing and making sure that nothing is going to stick to the other part of your decal. So if you're somebody like me who tends to fold it over, you can always cut it off a little bit if that helps you. So like once I get to about here usually, I start to fold over too much. So I will just go in and trim off the excess vinyl. That way I don't end up accidentally sticking it to itself. So that's just something to keep in mind when doing this. Like I said, this does take a little bit of practice. Now right here we have an E. So what I'm gonna do is just go in and just really, really gently pull off these centers. Now again, this does take a little practice. I'm so used to having the backing that I still press a little too hard with my pin pen and at too much of an angle sometimes because I'm so used to the backing. I'm still not the best at the reverse weed, but it is a super helpful little tool. And I think it is a really fun way, especially if you have something really, really detailed. Now, StarCraft HD, I will say, really performs beautifully for both the vinyl setting and the washi sheet setting. But if you are having a little bit of a struggle, if you're using some of the other brands, or if your machine isn't liking to cut on vinyl, definitely try that washi sheet setting. That has been an absolute lifesaver for a lot of these really little detailed intricate cuts. Like I said, this is just something that you just have to practice with. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish weeding all of this and show you guys how it looks.
here is the finished decal. Now with something like this, I would not do a reverse weed if you are going to put this on like a car or something like that unless you're right there to do it. This is not something I would recommend if you are selling your decals because you do need to take them off the backing and a lot of times placing them back on the backing will actually activate the pressure sensitive adhesive and can really cause problems for both you and your customer. So this would be something that's great if you're gonna apply it to your project right away. If you guys have any questions, please let me know in the comments down below. I am always happy to answer those for you. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. I'm on that path to 100,000 and would love to have you as part of my crafty family. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and happy crafting.